beautifully, beautifully um, said there. Um, let's look at um, organizations uh, 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 with regards to organic agility. Um, mm. We know that an organization is a living organism, and, and this is what, uh, you know, we're trying to make people understand, even in uh, leadership uh, development, uh, you know, with the whole new use of machines um, in the workplaces, uh, people, you know, are having new conversations, you know, is it people first, is it, uh, uh, you know, machines first, uh, you know, tech first, people first. Let's just uh, explore um, organic agility. Do you just want to talk a little about that? Sure. So uh, there's this notion, you know, coming out of the industrial era that we uh, are a production line, right? And, and mm. at a point that that um, metaphor worked so nicely for us, actually. Before we got into knowledge working, we, we could think of of, an, of companies as organized as big production lines, right? We would, I don't know, if you were a hardware store, you would be creating physical products, uh, nails and hammers and whatever it is. Uh, and then it made sense to have this production line where you could put the raw materials into one end and the finished mm. product spat out the other side uh, and we could go and sell that to market. But in the knowledge working world, we're not really like that anymore, right? Uh, in fact, to be honest, I don't think we've ever been like that as knowledge workers. So we mm. deal with lots of different challenges. Uh, and one of the beautiful things about the information age that we live in is when we write software, uh, we can run it a million times. Once we've written a cool app, um, you know, like WhatsApp, for example, uh, once they've perfected the platform and it works as you would expect it to, they can roll it out to billions of people across mm. the world. Everyone can benefit from WhatsApp without having to, without any person having to physically go and, you know, do a piece of work of those billions of users that come on. So the, the, the computer takes care of all of that. So, our job has shifted as happy as uh, as knowledge workers. Our job is to create those apps and those those pieces of software that we can use a million times over. But each the actual process of creating those new pieces of software tends to be very um, different each time because we hardly ever do the same thing twice. And mm. so, if you think about it, uh, in an organization, we have these. We like to apply this industrial age thinking, where we think, "Oh, we're a machine, right? If we take a business requirement and we put it into the process, it's going to follow all these different steps, and then it'll come out on the other side as working software." But in reality, what we've come to learn is that work doesn't follow those processes down to the letter. What tends to happen mm. is we come up against unexpected challenges that we didn't know we were going to encounter because yeah. we've never solved this problem before. Uh, and all of a sudden, we need a new way of thinking. So then we'll phone up our buddy and say, Sarah, uh, like, I, I know that I, I know you're really busy, but I need your help with this thing. I'm having difficulty. I can't get this um, this table to, to work in my database. And I know you're the expert. So please, can you just help me? And so we have these networks of people that actually get the work done. Uh, and that's very much more like uh, the the natural world, right? We have organisms mm. that all work together in harmony with one another to, to survive and to thrive with one another. So the actual way that work gets done is with teams of people and the team teams problem solve together. And sometimes problem solving means going to other teams of people and asking them for their help. Uh, and so if we try and apply this mechanistic process-driven thinking to solving complex challenges that we've never done before, we find that we wind up getting caught short, right? Mm. Uh, and so organizations are actually a lot more organic in nature than they are like machines. So um, we, you know, what happens if Adrian is having a bad day uh, and mm. he, he um, is just not feeling well on that given day, like all of a sudden that cog in the machine is not going to function the way you wanted it to. And so the whole, the whole organism uh, reacts accordingly. So for example, in COVID, um, just to go back to, to, to that example, because it's it's kind of top of mind, we mm. had people, key people within our organization uh, who got sick and they were gone for two weeks. And mm. all of a sudden the organization had to respond and go, well, how the heck are we going to uh, change our way of being with one another so that we can still deliver to our stakeholders? Uh, and so we reorganized and someone else stepped into their role uh, well, maybe it was a group of people who shared out what it was that that particular person was doing. 
Uh, and so we rearranged ourselves, you know, like an immune system. We were like, okay, we're mm -hmm. responding to this change. Let's figure out how we can, we can still deliver the, the solution that our stakeholders were expecting, but we're going to do it totally differently to what we thought we were going to do. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. So then we, we cannot talk about uh, organic agility without talking about uh, generative thinking. Um, let's dive into that. Uh, you know, what is generative thinking and why do you think generative thinking is uh, critical for organizations, yeah. um, especially for people who are in leadership? Yeah, so that's such a great theme. And in fact, it's, it's another one of those topics that's close to my heart is, is uh, a generative organization. So, you know, um, there's, there's three broad categories that an organization might fall into. Uh, the first one being pathological, uh, and that's a horrible organization to be in, right? That's where we're all stabbing each other in the back and mm. we're trying to cover our bums the whole time because we don't want to get into trouble. Uh, and as long as, as long as I can you know, make an excuse and someone else will get the blame, uh, the mm. blame culture, like that, that's a very toxic organization to work in. Uh, then in, in kind of the middle ground, we have a bureau bureaucratic organization where uh, we tend to be very focused on the processes and sticking to the traditional way of doing things. Uh, and the organization functions, you know, stuff gets done, but it's not very efficient. And perhaps the, the customers, you know, have a bit of a, a love-hate relationship with your organization. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have a generative organization where we're open to trying new things. We have leaders who are who see uh, people as as for what they are, these amazing human mm. beings that have these mm. phenomenal brains and these great talents that they bring to the table rather than just um, um, resources that uh, are popped in, a, in a, a cubicle and expected to churn out the same thing uh, day after day. Uh, and so they are... A a lot more innovation and trying new things and, and recognizing the, the human ele uh, element within each of us and trying to help create a space where we can all bring our best selves to work every day so that we can really mm -hmm. show up. Uh, and so having a generative mindset is one in which you allow people the opportunity to experiment and try things. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it was uh, Eric Ries in his Lean Startup book who talks a lot about... Um, experimenting and not being afraid to fail right uh, so uh, I, I saw a really great quote the other day uh, we used to think about companies being a win or lose right sometimes you mm. will we'll, we'll be great and we will we'll create this new product and we win like oh we're the winners uh, or maybe something didn't work out and we're the losers like oh we lost oh that's everyone's so sad we lost <laughs> Uh, whereas the mindset from a generative perspective shifts more to one of win or learn. Like, okay, so we didn't, ah. didn't work out the way we wanted it to, but yes. what have we learned? Mm. What can we take away from this experience that we can do differently next time? So mm. that uh, when we faced with this similar challenge the next time around, we'll do things a little differently and we'll get a different outcome. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, and I think that's, you know, tying back to our new ways of working and new ways mm. of being. If you can adopt that learning mindset and say, oh, uh, we wanted to go to a hybrid meeting and we decided to get everyone, you know, some people came to the office and some people were online. Uh, mm -hmm. What did we learn? Out of this? Well, we've yeah. learned that it's really hard to, to have these hybrid meetings where some people, you know, get excluded because the people in the room are having this chat and they're ignoring the people online or, or maybe mm -hmm. everyone's sitting in the room with their laptops open and they're not having that chat because we're all still, you know, in online mode. Mm. So what is it that we learned and how are we going to do things differently next time around? So that, that's the more generative mindset, right? It's, mm. it's when we learn. Mm. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. And I actually think uh, this is uh, the future of leadership is this. As a leader, you've, we all have to um, embrace this way of uh, of. Uh, of doing life uh, because uh, like we were even saying before, it's uh, bringing the humanness to the center of everything uh, that we're doing uh, in organizations and in businesses. If we are to actually get uh, the best out of uh, the people uh, that we lead. And that's exactly it, right? How do we get the best out of the people that we lead? And so mm. once you have risen to a position of leadership, it's an honor, right? It's, it's yeah. a position that contains great power and you need to acknowledge mm. that power.